Hi, I'm John Geckler for the Gibbs Singleton Museum in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And today I want to get into Gibbs Pietas. He actually made a series of them, and this is one that's only recently been recovered and released. The Pieta is the single most common image in art. If you go to Google and search for Pieta under images, you'll get millions. It's been done by everybody from Van der Weyden to Titian to El Greco to Van Gogh. And even Pablo Picasso, there is a Pieta, an anguished Pieta panel in his Guernica, his most famous piece. The Pieta is actually not a really helpful term. Pieta just means pity or compassion in Italian. So it doesn't apply to the specific image that we have in our heads, which is Michelangelo's Pieta in the Vatican in Rome. That's actually a misnomer too, because what we really should say is that's Michelangelo's first Pieta in the Vatican in Rome. But it was so powerful, it was so amazing, and it was so stunning in those times that it's kind of become our default meme of what a Pieta looks like. He actually made at least two others. There's the so-called Bandini, and then there is the Rondanini, and that was one he worked on right up until the end of his life. And in fact, the Rondanini is probably the inspiration for this one with that pose, as opposed to the seated virgin holding the child in her arms, or holding her son in her arms. What's interesting about this in that breaking away, in having that different pose, is that she's now completely carrying the weight of her child. So she's carrying him as an adult in his death, just as she carried him as a child in her, his life. She's bearing the complete weight of her child's death. You can also see this piece as a visual representation of the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. It goes from, of course, Jesus as a child to Jesus in his final days, his final moments. And it also goes from the transition of Jesus of Nazareth into Jesus Christ the Savior in the Christian tradition. And then finally, we have to understand that the Pieta was incredibly personal to Gibb. And when you normally see a Pieta, when you think of Michelangelo's Pieta, most of those that followed on, you see a very young, very serene virgin. Gibb said, I've buried two of my children. There is nothing serene about it. There is nothing harder to do than to be a parent burying your child. So when we see Gibbs Pietas, we see that deep sorrow and that pain. And the backstory of this that Gibb very rarely talked about was that this piece was done right after his son Cody died. Cody was born with a hole in his heart and within the medical protocols and, and technology of the day, there was nothing they could do about it. And he lingered for a few months and then he died. And it completely blew Gibb up. Not knowing what to do, how to handle his grief, how to handle his anger, how could this happen? He locked himself in the studio because Gibb always said, you know, when things go wrong in your life, you gotta put it in your work. So when everything is falling apart, go to work and put that failure right there in your work. And he did that in this piece and that was really how he preserved his sanity for the loss of his son. When his daughter Alexis was 25, she died of a, an overdose of black tar heroin. And Gibb never knew whether it was an accident, whether it was murder, whether it was suicide. In fact, he always carried a silver bullet for his 45 long Colt that he said was for the guy who gave her those drugs. But again, he was completely blown up. He had no idea what to do. And he locked himself in the studio, literally locked himself in the studio for seven days and seven nights and created his Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, which a lot of critics will argue is his masterpiece. If there's one piece we're going to remember a thousand years on, that may be the one. Those kind of experiences pushed Gibb in more 
deeply into spiritual art. He had always done spiritual art, even though it was completely sale-proof in America. Gibb was making spiritual art when you couldn't give the stuff away. And I asked him one time, how, how come you do spiritual art? I mean, knowing in those times that the, you couldn't market it, that it, was, it wasn't ever gonna be popular. And he said, spiritual art is hope. He said, it's hope things are gonna get better. It's hope things are gonna let up. It's hope that there's heaven on the other side of all of this when we make it through. Thanks for tuning in. I'm John Geckler for the Gibbs Eagleton Museum.